Greetings everyone! Allow me to introduce to you the members of Group 4 who are gathered together with the aim to explain to you one of the data management, which is the broken line graph. Firstly, I am Christine Orachon, a member of the group, and we have here our leader, which is Pence Palacio, and the rest of the members who are Shane Andre Arisgado, Asha May Cavigas, Bernali Joy Nable, Mary Ann Galicame, Janelle Iris Canyaliso, Josette Rian Adan, and Vanessa Kate Kubilan. So in today's video, we will be talking about what is a broken line graph, the uses of a broken line graph, uh, examples of a broken line graph, and as well as their solutions. What is a broken line graph? It is a diagram in which line formed by segments connects the represent data. It is also a diagram that has horizontal axis divided into units of time and vertical axis that displays the qualitative characteristics studied and in which the data recorded are represented by points that are connected to one another by segments to form a broken line that illustrates the evolution of phenomenon under consideration. What can we see in a broken line graph? First, we have the horizontal axis or the x-axis, which is divided into units of time. Then the vertical axis, which is the y-axis, which displays the value of qualitative characteristics being studied. Then lastly, the pointers or markers that shows the amount or the data being presented. Then it can be presented by any kinds of shape, for example, star, circle, and square or any that can represent. So what does a broken line graph look like? A broken line graph looks like this. As you can see, uh, on the top portion of a broken line graph, we can see the title. On the left side of a broken line graph, we can see the x-axis. On the bottom portion of a broken line graph, we can see the y-axis. And inside the x and y axis, we can see the points and lines that are used. Now the points can be a star, triangle, circle. These are the uses of a broken line graph. Number one, it is used to show changes in data over time. They display trends or patterns and help us make predictions. Number two, it is useful for representing the distribution of a quantitative characteristic. It is a type of graph fit for a quantitative report. Number three, it is used to join values but the line has no defined slope. These points correlate with each other and plays an important part of the graph. Here are some samples of broken line. Sam decides to spend time with his friend Aaron. He hops on his bike and starts off to Aaron's house. But on his way, he gets a flat tire and must walk the remaining distance. Once he arrives at Aaron's house, they repair the flat tire, play some poker, and then Sam returns to home. On his way home, Sam decides to stop at the mall to buy a book on how to play poker. The following graph represents Sam's adventure. So, how far it is from Sam's house to Aaron's house? The answer is, it is 25 kilometers from Sam's house to Aaron's house. The next one is, how far is it from Aaron's house to the mall? The answer is, 15 kilometers from Aaron's house to the mall. And the next question is, at what time did Sam have a flat tire? The answer is, Sam had a flat tire at 10 o'clock a.m. The next question is, how long did Sam stay at Aaron's house? The answer is Sam stayed at Aaron's house for one hour. The example number two about the change in the temperatures during the last ten, last ten days of July. As you see in the graph, it is from 22nd to July 31st. As you can see in the y-axis we have 
The scale of y-axis, the numbers representing the temperature, ranges from 22 degrees to 37 degrees. As you can see in the graph shown, the temperature is increasing in the, in the last 5 days and change in, in the next 3 days, then it increase in the next 2 days. Below in the axis, you can see the numbers, number of days in the month of July. You can see there when they are changing by date of the month of July. Here are the data observed for temperatures from July 22nd to July 31st. Now, we can begin adding the data points. In July 22, 24 degrees Celsius. In 23, 27 degrees Celsius. In 24, 31 degrees Celsius. In 25, 32 degrees Celsius. In 26, 35 degrees Celsius. In 27, 32 degrees Celsius. 28, 27 degrees Celsius. 29, 23 degrees Celsius. 30, 29 degrees Celsius. And in July 31, 33 degrees Celsius. We can make several interpretations based on this graph. So, as you can see on the left side of the graph, between July 22nd and 25th, the temperature increased by 8 degrees. Next, on the right side of the graph, the degrees of temperature dropped 9 degrees between 27th and 29th. Next, on July 26th, it was hotter than on July 22nd. Lastly, July 26 is the hottest day. For our last example, we have here a graph about the COVID deaths that has happened from 2020 starting from July, August, October, and lastly on November. And we have here our source where you can look at where we have find our data. Our group wanted to know the graphical status of deaths COVID have caused last 2020. We made the survey using the recorded data posted by the Philippine government. We've collected data from July to November 2020. For July, we have about 200 deaths. For August, 500 deaths. For October, 100 deaths. And for November, 200 deaths. For the question, what is the highest recorded death? We have about 500 deaths, which is from August. And what is the range value of the horizontal scale? That would be 500. That is all for our example for Broken Line Graph. Thank you all for listening.